Good morning all, it's post bag and this is a big parcel. What can it be? Right, lots of polystyrene. There are a load of nuts and bolts here. But I'm having a job cutting the tape. Ah, look at that. Super capacitors. So yes, I've been and gone and bought eight more of these um, large Nippon Chemicon supercapacitors. They're very thoughtfully laid out with the uh, terminals on one side and on the other. That's quite thoughtful. Uh, let's take a close look at that label. Yeah, these are Nippon Chemicon uh, DLCA 2.5 volt, 630 farads. Um, this could perhaps be seen as a little bit extravagant since I already have uh, six of these 2.5 volt 700 farad supercapacitors, but I originally ordered eight of these and only received six. Six came from one seller, two came from another seller, and when they didn't turn up I started to um, make noises on eBay about uh, a refund and they just refunded me instantly without any fuss. So it kind of looked like they'd never sent those two at all anyway. Anyway, I now found myself with uh, six of the 700 farad capacitors and eight of the 630 farad capacitors. So uh, I better start using them for something. So these are for my uh, super capacitor powered Bluetooth speaker project, the one where only one speaker turned up, but uh, I have since received uh, two more speakers so I can now carry on with this project. So let's have a look at these two capacitors. Um, the 700 farad is actually slightly larger uh, than the 630 farad. I don't know whether they are larger proportionate with their uh, capacitance values. Um, I did also buy these protection boards and I seem to remember I've charged this one up. I've also, I don't know whether you can see this, um, put a little blue LED between the, well I thought it was the gate and source of what I thought was a MOSFET, but this isn't a MOSFET, this is actually a bipolar transistor, so connecting um, a blue LED between the base and the emitter, uh, that's definitely not going to light up, and indeed it doesn't. So the next thing I want to do in this project is reverse engineer this little protection board, um, because it is very different to the protection board that's on my other supercapacitor modules, which had a little voltage sensor chip connected through to a MOSFET. Um, this one is entirely different. This has a little TL431, uh, well, it's a sort of voltage reference with a big switch on it and a comparator. And uh, if the input goes over the voltage reference, it turns on. Uh, it's also got a PNP transistor there and a big NPN transistor. There's the little blue LED I soldered on, but that's not gonna do anything. Um, I have actually started to sketch out uh, the circuit of this, so there it is, and I'm going to uh, reverse engineer and try and test this and try and put some DVMs on it, uh, get some voltages, try and get an understanding of how this is working, because I kind of understand MOSFETs uh, more than I understand bipolar transistors, so this could be quite fun actually trying to uh, understand how this board works. So here are the eight uh, protection boards that I bought. This one's actually quite cheap. I think these you can get for uh, a couple of dollars each, I think. Uh, there's the eighth one up there. Now I've seen um, other ones of this form factor, this circular form factor with this pitch uh, to connect onto these capacitor terminals, which are indicated as 2.7 volts. Um, I've also seen another type, again, this form factor, which has a little LED on it, so um, it's interesting, there are other of these types available, but I don't know whether you can get 2.7 volt capacitors on eBay in this form factor. So here these things are in my uh, purchase history. You can also see the two speakers there, but I've done those before on a post bag. Um, these I purchased in August. I actually bought seven and then one. Actually, I think I bought the one first and then the seven. Um, quite expensive, it was $97 for the 7 and $13.98, so $14 for one. So in total, that's, um, that's $110, isn't it? 
Now, if you're going to search for these things on eBay to see if um, they're still being sold, either the 630 farad or the 700 farad, uh, you need to know what to search for. So certainly supercapacitor, possibly Nippon, but also this word fara. Um, someone must have misspelt this at some point in the past, put fara instead of farad, and ever since they've been listed as fara. So uh, you might want to include that in your search string. So I'm just going to see if I can find uh, any of these supercapacitors still on sale. Yes, they are still for sale. Um, so we've got here one piece Nippon 2.5 volt 630 farad supercapacitor car kit farad. Um, it is idea for life. It's the same seller. $13.28 free shipping. He has got another listing where they're $12 or something. Um, but with a shipping charge, uh, as I say, idea for life. So there must be a bulk load of these things uh, available. Now it does say here, item condition used. Um, so they're quite possibly second hand. And someone suggested they might have come out of uh, buses, uh, these uh, supercapacitor diesel hybrid uh, buses. And uh, there's, there are some other supercapacitors with these uh, screw terminals. There's one here, which is 2.7 volt, 3,000 farads, $43. But this has a wider diameter. It's 60 mil diameter. And it does look to me like those two screw terminals are further apart. So it probably wouldn't fit onto that um, protection board that I have. They've also got another one here, same price, but 2,000 farads instead of 3,000 farads. Another one down here. Uh, two and a half thousand farads or 2.7 volts. But like I say, I don't think that protection board, this one here in effect, is going to fit across there. And in terms of those protection boards, let's look at the ones that I've uh, found. So uh, this one does look somewhat different. Um, you can see down here in the, uh, well, let's enlarge the image. No, I can't do that because I can't point at it. But on this uh, bottom circle here, uh, you can see, if I put my mouse about there, that there's actually a diode, uh, an LED, I mean, there, and a 390 ohm resistor, or 330 ohm it is, actually, if you look at the big image on the right, uh, in series with that LED. Now, there are only two small devices on that. There aren't, there isn't a big sort of power transistor. So is this using the voltage detector and um, MOSFET arrangement? Uh, this is described as a 2.7 volt, 500 farad, uh, farad, sorry, supercapacitor, that's a Freudian slip, supercapacitor balancing protection board. And uh, here's another one, and this is described as 2.7 volts rather than the 2.5 volts of the ones that I've got, uh, balancing protection board. And this is slightly different to the one I've got in that they've got these three resistors whereas mine's only got one resistor. Now, I believe that they're probably using the other two resistors to create a potential divider to slightly shift the uh, voltage switching point of the TL431, um, whereas on mine, it's set to the 2.5 volt internal reference. Here, they might be using those two resistors to shift that to 2.7 volts. So maybe this is actually a 2.7 volt uh, protection board. Right, next up is this one. I've kind of uh, destroyed the bag on this one, but I was quite uh, keen to show the label because this has the description of check the test instrument. So, uh, yeah, what exactly is a check the test instrument? It's in very big bubble, bubble wrap. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for this. Uh, yes, this is a Quick Charge 3 and also Quick Charge 2 um, trigger PCB. But it's interesting because it's got more buttons than the, the ones I've already got. I might take those out in a minute. It also has um, a plug and socket so that you can pass uh, whatever voltage you've triggered through to this output socket. And uh, you can see from here we've got two LEDs, one for Quick Charge 2, despite the fact that there's a a test pad right in the middle of that lettering. Uh, another one for quick charge three. We've got voltage range uh, LEDs. This one is five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, and 20 volts. Um, also described as four to 6.9, seven to 10.9, 11 to 14.9, and 15 to 20. 
So let's plug this into a Quick Charge 3 compatible power bank and see what it does. Right, I've plugged this thing into the Quick Charge 3 output of this power bank. Um, I've also put a power monitor in it so we can look at the voltage. I've put this lamp on the other socket, but this is one of the regular outputs and they do seem to be independent. So this one does seem to time out. Uh, but in Quick Charge 2 mode, I can go up from 5 volts to 9 volts. That's turned itself off. Let's switch the power bank back on. Uh, so 9 volts. I can also go up again to 12 volts and the indicator LED shows that. If I go up again to 20 volts, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't seem that this power bank can do 20 volts. And if I press it again, it goes back to 5 volts. Now in Quick Charge 3 mode, press the mode button to change the mode over. Um, the up and down buttons do the 200 millivolt increments. So that goes from 5.1 to 5.3, 5.5, and it's gone off again. But notice what happens when I switch it back on. It remembers where it was. So it remembers that it was on Quick Charge 3. It remembers that it's in this voltage range. It's actually on 5.5. So if I take this all the way up, and it doesn't seem to be very quick to respond to this button. Also, if you press and hold, it would have been nice if it had um, auto-incremented, but it doesn't. So let's take this up to, I don't know, say 10 volts. Let's say I've got something which I want to run on 10 volts. That's powered off, because I think the Quick Charge 3 socket has timed out. Let's switch the power bank back on. And it remembers the 10 volts. That's actually 10.2, so let's come down to 10.0. And the way it seems to do it, let's press and hold this to power it off. The way it seems to do it, if you look at these LEDs, which are incredibly dim, is it goes to QC3 and then you see QC3 pulsing rapidly. And I think what it's doing is it's sending out uh, whatever the protocol is to increment the voltage by uh, 200 millivolts really quickly in rapid succession. Let's look at that again. It just pulses rapidly winds the output up to uh, 10 volts. So this thing actually remembers what you last set it to. And that's not surprising because there is actually a little uh, memory chip there. It's a 24C something or other. If you look at previous generations of these things, um, we've got this one, which is the YZX Studio. Uh, what's it called? QC Get 2.0. Now this is mostly a Quick Charge 2 device but if you press and hold you can get it to do quick charge 3 it's a bit nasty because you then have to do single pulses for up and long presses I think to go down in voltage the original unit was this which was just simply uh, a QC 2.0 and this only does quick charge 2.0 it has a three color LED which cycles through uh, the three voltages but these don't have the sort of pass through socket to enable you to actually use that higher voltage. This one does, and not only that, it remembers the voltage that you set it to, and that's gone up to 10 volts. So could this be, this little unit, a way of turning a regular uh, power bank into uh, a multi-voltage power supply? Yeah, I think it could. Uh, so here's a 21 watt uh, 12 volt car brake light bulb. And uh, let's switch this on and see what it does. And we switch on and it comes on dim and then it brightens up because this thing is winding the voltage up but, uh, to uh, approximately 12 volts. Now I haven't quite gone to 12 volts because I've discovered that if I do uh, take this up to about 12 point something, it's actually a flashing on and off like crazy because something's not happy and it's probably over current detection or maybe even over power protection on the quick charge 3 output so i don't quite know what the spec is for quick charge 3 in terms of watts but it looks like it can't quite manage uh 21. well of course we've got that specification here in the manual for this power bank um Quick charge 3 output, 5 to 6 volts, 3 amps, 6 to 9 volts, 2 amps, and 9 to 12 volts, 1.5 amps. So uh, 21 watts, 12 volts is a little bit over spec, so it's not surprising 
that it was uh, switching on and off. But nice to know that this thing is detecting that uh, overcurrent or probably more of an overpower detection, isn't it? And uh, switching the output off before anything nasty happens. So a quick look at the chips on these things. Uh, the original QC2 board looks like it's got an 80 tiny 13A, is that? A little 8-pin device. The Quick Charge 2 board that also had Quick Charge 3 kind of sort of bodge integrated into it has an 80 tiny 24A. And uh, this new one, whoops, I keep knocking the camera. Uh, well, you can't see what the chip is because it's been masked. But there's an Atmel 24C02 uh, memory chip sitting next to the microcontroller. My guess is they're both Atmel. Um, that's where the memory comes from, so that this thing can remember what you last set it to, and therefore can uh, immediately push the voltage up to whatever you want. Awesome. Uh, so yes, if we look at watts on this thing, I can get 17.4. Take that up another 200 millivolts, 17.8. Eight, that bulb's quite warm. Uh, 18 point, nearly 3 watts there. But if I try and take it beyond that, 18.6 or 7, I think it's flashing. It doesn't really like it. Let's bring it down one peg. Yeah, so I can get it to just over 18 watts where it's hanging in there. But it doesn't like any more than that. Interesting. And I just thought I'd try a different uh, power bank, which has Quick Charge 3. But this one, I don't see any to be able to push. This one tops out at about 17.1 watts, and it just isn't pushing the voltage any higher than that. It's a little bit higher if you take the load off. It goes up to 12, but this one won't go over 12 volts. Uh, the EC Technology one, which I just tried, actually goes up to 13. And when you load this up, it drops down a bit. So I can only get 17.1 watts out of this one. Interesting. So this item is a QC 2.0, QC 3.0 USB automatic LCD tester. LCD, that doesn't really mean anything, does it? Uh, voltage charger, detector, current meter, new. No, they've got that very mixed up. The um, QC 3 trigger, I think, is a better description. That's what's written on the back of the board. Uh, this is just $3.85, free shipping, and this one came from Echoey Mall. Uh, just one thing you should bear in mind if you're thinking of buying this to turn your power bank into a, a, a multi-voltage power supply. In the EC Technology power bank, that works fine. When I plug it in, it pulls the voltage setting from the memory, winds the voltage up, and that's all good. If I put it in the uh, Orky Quick Charge 3, which doesn't seem to switch on automatically, so I'll switch it on manually. It just seems to sort of do this funny flickering thing and stay at 5 volts. And even if I pull that out and put it back in with the uh, power bank on, it just doesn't seem to climb above 5 volts. Put it in this one, and it does seem to uh, memorize that voltage setting, but I actually can't get it to do the memory function on this power bank at all. Uh, press the switch and if you switch it from uh, QC3 to QC2 it sort of solves that flashing thing but then immediately loses its memory and it now uh, doesn't remember that 10 volts. If I put it back into here it's forgotten the 10 volt setting so it only remembers it until you press this uh, mode button. So it uh, looks like it only, it's only going to work on some power banks and not all of them, unfortunately. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, as usual, I want to say a big thanks to uh, Patreon supporters, without whom uh, purchasing of this sort of stuff, particularly things like these capacitors, uh, wouldn't be possible. So uh, this icon here, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter of my channel, uh, another couple of videos up there if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, touch my face here. Cheerio.